I'm going to show you all how I finish curly wood. So whether it's a knife handle or an axe handle or a little loading block or whatever you're doing with wood that's curly like this, you need to sand it to get the full effect. And this is a curly ash tomahawk handle that I've sanded to about a thousand grit minimum 400 you get a little more glare out of it the higher grit you go and then you need to steel wool it especially this ash because of the open pores catches all your sanding dust so once you got it sanded you're gonna need some aqua fortis or nitric acid and this is, I make this, I have a big gallon of nitric acid and you dilute it with distilled water a little bit and you just peel off little pieces of steel wool and drop it in and it makes a reaction and you keep doing that until it just quits dissolving steel wool and a jar about this size took about a pad and a half of steel wool so once you got it, let it settle a few days. You can choose to strain the goop out of the bottom. I don't bother, I go through it so quick. Um, it's quite safe in this state. The nitric acid itself is very caustic and dangerous and don't breathe the fumes. Stay up wind with it, preferably with a, a respirator. But once it's dissolved, the reaction kind of makes it uh, not as caustic. So what we're going to do is we want to just coat the wood with it and especially with this ash you got to make sure you get a liberal amount on there because of all those tiny little pores from the grain. Curly maple is not as big of a problem but I'm using a little bit too much for a knife handle all you really need is a q-tip and you want to saturate it and don't let a big glob of it sit too long in one place. Make sure it's nice and even. Like I said, it's quite safe, but you still don't want to get it on a lot of things in your shop. Okay, I'm going to make sure the end grain is good. All the pores are fully saturated. And I'm wearing gloves because my hands are kind of dirty. And you want to keep this clean. You do not want any speck of iron or steel to touch this, whether it's grinding dust, etc. It will make a nasty black spot, and you don't want that. Okay, so I've got that pretty well saturated. And I'm going to kind of let it dry for just a moment while I get this set up here. So I let it sit there and I got a big nasty spot here. So I'm going to take a fresh cotton ball and just wipe off the excess. And for a knife handle especially, you're going to want to whisker your wood, which is dampen the surface, let it dry, let it raise the grain, and then steel wool it off and do that until the grain stops raising. Because once you put this on it, it will raise the grain a little bit. But luckily we have to use steel wool anyways, and it knocks that grain fluff back down and plus it's a tomahawk handle. So I've got this ready to go. I'm going to take my gloves off since it's pretty well dry and if you don't have a heat gun you can just heat up a bar of iron red hot and hold it over it. So I'm going to turn this up quite high and I'm going to let it warm up a bit. before I put this on here. 
And when I hit it with a heat gun, you'll see it makes a reaction and turns it dark. It's not going to look like much yet. The oil is what makes it stand out. So all this is is glowing red elements in this cheap heat gun. You could even probably see the red glowing off the wood so you could just use like I said a bar of iron heated up. This is how they used to do flintlock rifles and still do to this day. There's some other products like Magic Maple. Some people just use leather stain but ah, there's nothing quite like this aqua fortis and the, the longer you hold the heat gun on and the higher the heat the darker it will get but you don't want to burn it because it will char it and it makes a ugly black spot you gotta sand out and this is just a surface reaction. So if you threw this tomahawk and nicked it, you would see the white wood under it. And sometimes if you don't get the dark, the shade of dark that you like, you can do this and add another coat and repeat this step. Make sure you get the ends. I think I've got everything. All right. We don't need this anymore. Now, it's nice, but it's not as nice as it can be. So I'm gonna grab some linseed oil. you'll see that just by putting a little bit of that on there this is horrible lighting it makes all that curl and grain pop out and it's almost 3d if the lighting was better And I cut my linseed oil not quite 50-50 with paint thinner. It allows it to soak in a little faster. It takes multiple coats, but it dries so fast. And a bunch of a bunch of lighter coats, three, four, five, six, seven, gets the shine that you want, but doesn't leave that big thick sticky linseed oil residue on it. So hopefully you can see if I can get the angle right. And I will say I did forget to do one thing and that's after I put the aqua fortis and used the heat gun. I forgot to steal wool it, but it still came out nice. So I got to be careful driving this tomahawk head up because it's going to scratch the wood. So wherever it does, I'll have to reapply with a Q-tip. I probably have to cut some of it off and reapply the damaged areas with a q-tip and redo the heat gun and you can see this wood here is already dry so you just keep adding it to it so i'm going to take this tomahawk head back off because i'm not done with the oil get a little bit on there and you can take your hand and rub it until it burns and it really adds another effect to it
Anyways, hope you all enjoyed.